I see Samantha's on. Hey, Mark, since uh, Anthony is a guest uh, on the committee, you and Rob do constitute a quorum if you want to move on. We do, okay. Yep. Rob, you looked at the minutes from the last meeting? I did. Looking for a motion to accept? I, I uh, propose a motion to accept. All in favor, aye. And you, aye. aye. Motion's passed, thank you. <laughs> and we can start off, Tim. All right, very good. Well, another, uh, you guys are making us work pretty hard, I gotta say, <laughs> which we're grateful for. So um, yeah, another robust uh, uh, report. There are a variety of reports when you saw them all together. <clears throat> So uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna let you guys uh, run. I will tell you that um, we do have a meeting with the mayor in a couple of days to uh, introduce him to this project. I will even say, uh, quote unquote, sell him on the project. Um, is is talented and as uh, grateful as that we are to have our mayor that's been here 36 years. As much as we support the mayor, um, he is not a technology fan. And I will go beyond that. I think I've shared that with you. But he feels in many cases that technology is, is just an absolute bad path. All right. So that said, we have to take and, and we have to do some convincing. Uh, Mark, myself, and Joe Mira, uh, the chair of the Economic Development Commission, will be meeting with the mayor this week. So I share that with you because as we go through this, everything we do, we need your help to make sure that we have the right ammunition to convince and i'll plant one seed now that uh well first off our meeting i believe is wednesday no tuesday tomorrow tomorrow at 10 o'clock so one thing that um i think we need a stronger argument on is we're we're, we're diving into facebook linkedin instagram these are going to be our pathways we've got the, the different strategies and i can already hear him saying well tell me how tell me how many communities have attracted business using any of those those uh, methodologies. And right now, given our reports, I, I've gone back through them, and I think we have some we have some justifications, uh, albeit I think they could be stronger. So um, it would certainly be nice to have something that says, well, you know, Duluth attracted ABC company because of a LinkedIn relationship, or you know, you, you know where I'm going. So. Um, or Calum and Samantha, in your case, you know, um, such and such a community has strengthened their, um, you know, their contacts or their, uh, let's say, qualified leads because of, you know, robustness and then, you know, changes to the website. So uh, I think knowing him as well as, well as we do, I know that's where the conversation is even going to start. Why, why, do you, why do you need these things? Why, why do you, what makes you think, prove to me that somebody else has, has made you know, great strides using these technologies because uh, again, um, he he is not a not a big fan. So, and I know it's it's like like this is an eleventh hour thing to say, boy, how can we strengthen this argument by tomorrow morning at ten o'clock? But if anybody has any thoughts or anything along your research paths that is just sitting there, saying, hey, I can just throw this one at you, Tim, and and. Um, you guys can take it to the meeting. Um, I'm, I'm certainly that would be that would be very helpful. Hey, Tim, could I just add to your comments? Um, sure. Lack lacking a particular direct route and a direct comparison, uh, i.e., another community, because we're trying to do things that others maybe haven't, and develop a a, a key uh, differentiator and an advantage. So, uh, lacking a direct, can we try some also consider some indirect approaches? So there might be some other industries that maybe not, it might not be a particular town trying to attract a business, but it may be a business trying to attract customers or something along that line that we could relate to what we're trying to do. So um, that might help bolster that. Yeah, here are 10, 10 companies in markets that they were, uh, they were uh, uh, being, uh, finding themselves unsuccessful and then they implemented these other technologies and this is the, this is, this is the success that, the success, excuse me, so the success that um, uh, followed by implementing these changes. So that uh, may, maybe just opens up, opens up the, uh, your, your breadth of options anyways. Good, very good point, Rob. All right, with that, um, if anybody uh, on the team doesn't have any further comment, um, David, I think I'll turn it over to you to get the show started here. 
Okay. Well, so first off, kudos on you guys for doing so much work in the span of less than a week. <laughs> so that I think you guys all need to be super commended for that. Um, and how about, I'm trying to think. Chandler, we didn't get a chance to talk to your points last week. Um, and so I would really like to make sure that we hit that. But before we start, because this is finals week, does anyone have a final that they need to rush off to anytime soon? I think Jack just has something at nine. So that's yeah, I have work at nine. That's it. OK, cool. Then Chandler, why don't you go first? And so you, you can fill us in a little bit of what you were going to talk about last week and then tell us about this week. Okay, so last week I took a look at the process of Wallingford and how we can improve that. And so I talked to with um, Todd Langston, and he what he is is he's um, a Chick Fil A franchiser, and he constantly looks at like improving processes and, and streamlining things. So he mentioned two different systems that we could use in terms of improving Wallingford's process. And he mentioned first um, Tim Woody, which is transportation, inventory, movement, waiting time, overproduction, and overcomplication, defects, and your own ideas. So, so just for context, Tim Woody is an acronym for the types of wastes that you can build into a system and things that you should be looking to eliminate. Yeah. yeah. And waste is anything that's like defined as um, it's defined as anything that doesn't add value to the overall customer. Um, so what we could do with this is we could look at deeper into how Wallingford runs their process, um, and just like if we see that there's a lot of like wait times, like with meetings, we could ask to cut those down, or if the the application's overcomplicated, then that creates waste because people might make a mistake and then they have to redo it. Other people have to um, like redo their work too. And so I, if I'll, I just mentioned my next possible steps off of this is I could create like a mock-up, which is like, I could go through the process as like, I guess a, a secret like applicant and so then I could see like where I found the most difficulty, where I didn't, where things went simple. Um, and then we could ask our employees, like the people who actually do the, the, um, the processes and like the applications, we could actually ask them what, what you find most difficult, where you feel the, the system's inefficient, the process is inefficient. And then finally, I mentioned that we should um, create like a exit survey for applicants. We could say like, here, take these two or three questions. Where did you find the, the most inefficient, the least inefficient? Like, what did you find that really was interesting or not interesting, et cetera? So um, I also looked at the the uh like software to help streamline this program um and so i could just skip through so that we um that everyone could get their their piece in but my recommendation was city grow the reason why is because it's it's much cheaper than any other option um the other ones were twenty eight thousand dollars uh City, um, no, Gov Pilot was fifty thousand dollars a year, and I I never heard what Excella said, um, but um, the City Grow is ten thousand dollars a year. I've actually created an account and it's free for the first thirty days. So it's it's I've actually created a workflow from that, and I think what City Grow does is it gives you the basics of what Wallingford wants to solve without any extra fluff. And so that's reflected in the price. But um, I think that's the, they have the basics of what we need. Um, and I could screen share. 
like my city go, I guess, account. So here's like one second, let me get okay. Here's like the workflow. So you could see um one second. Sorry. So you could see I created a a workflow for this and so it's it would be easier to track your applicants. Um, it also improves the the workflow, and I feel like it does the overall job the best. Um, you could also see you could see I set up multiple different ones. You could assign different people. You could check metrics. You could assign different people to different processes. But what I I like the best is that when an application, I mean, when a, a citizen wants to join and like wants to create a, um, create a, like a new pr uh, application, it tells them your responsibility, my responsibility, and then like it tells you the steps that you need to do. It also tells you the different like types of, um, types of applications that you need to submit. So I think it, it creates a clear, um, it creates a clear like roadmap for both the, the applicant and the, the like processor. That's really cool. Um, it'll be, it, Tim, you can, Tell me if this might be a step too far, but um, one of the things that I could see helping people say yes to software like this is to show um, what might be the potential time savings or whatnot and convert that into dollars saved. Because if it costs $10,000 a year, if we can show that it saves at least that much money from a process standpoint, the alternative is to also talk about how much new business, how much new tax revenue that this could generate. Um, but that is going to be more hypothetical because we're trying to then estimate, well, because this process is easier, it will not discourage as many people. And I don't know if that's going to be as strong of an argument. What I mentioned in my report is if you get 200 new or 200 applicants and um, the price is ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Then you only the, each applicant only has to pay fifty dollars more to like to pay for the system. And would the idea be that the applicants pay, or would it be that the town pays through the taxes? Because this would be something that cuts across multiple departments. Um, it's up to whoever. Uh, I was just giving the recommendation that if you don't necessarily want to pay for it, it's pretty easy to pay it off for an extra $50 per applicant. But that's, yeah. Um, I noticed that you had 800, uh, 80 new businesses last year, and I assume some people would be residential. So I just, I came up with the number of 200. Well, allow me, first of all, Chandler, good job. The, the objective was understand the, the the flow now um, and try to improve upon it recognizing that you know time is money to these businesses I will you know I will sometimes say things as a municipal employee that you may find um, are a little bit um, well I, I, I often chide on the municipal process because it is slow it's lethargic um, you would think intuitively as business uh, majors or some form of business major which is everybody on the screen that they would want to do things as quickly and as expeditiously and as business friendly as they possibly could. I'm here to share with you that that's not always the case. So um, it, it, it's, it, it can be challenging at times. So, so the question becomes, or the opportunity becomes, is when an applicant goes through the process and finishes, will, will they say, hey, this has been a, fair, a good experience and, and a fair experience? And there's an, any number of cases that I could share where that has not been the outcome. So my concern is 
what does that person say to somebody else that says they want to consider coming to Wallingford, right? So, um, you know, Radial had a good experience, for example. Um, the Infinity dealership on Route 5 had a nightmare of an experience getting through certain, you know, approval processes. And so, and sometimes just because it's too blessed long, they have their own, you know, uh, editorial opinions as to whether they're fair and reasonable, but the rules are the rules unless we change the rules. So I think at this point, um, you know, that would be a parallel path to all of the promotional things that we do. And that's, that's a much bigger lift because not only, you know, I, I understand that, you know, the mystery shopper component of what you're saying, I can go in and pretend I'm a, that would be, that would be uncovered really fast because we you get into, you know, yeah, I, detail quickly. Right. So, yeah. and, and I think the only chance we'd have of trying to improve the process through some technologies, which you have just confirmed exist, which is another big step. We needed to know that there are tools out there that can help us do this. Uh, it's going to, it's going to take buy-in. So I, I need to, you know, buy in, you know, all the, you know, the, the, the department and of course the mayor. The other thing that um, I just want to introduce is the fact that we are dealing with union employees. So the justifications quite often are going to be, we can spend this much money, but there's going to be some sort of an offsetting payroll savings. Maybe it's going to save a position in the department. Well, that doesn't just happen without contract negotiation. It gets complicated. But what I'm saying is, Good job. We did have that um, that you know conference call, that discovery call with Excella. Um, so, you know, we now know that there are there are software programs that are out there that exist that can help us take go down that path when we're ready to do it. And so I'm, I'm saying at this point, well done. Let's take that initiative. In my opinion, if the committee agrees, let's just kind of set that on the side burner and put all of our energies into you know the uh, the marketing side, and then. When time allows, um, then we, we say, okay, we have to start, we have to map out a buy-in process, a communications process to, to make sure that all of the departments would agree that this technology would be beneficial to them and then try to find some cost benefit, which even though the, um, uh, the vendor is, I mean, that's how they survive. They're, they're gonna be quick to show cost benefit. I suspect we're gonna get a little bit of pushback from the departments because they're not going to want to give up a position, you know, a union position. So anyway, that's, that's a bit of the real world, but uh, well done. Thank you. Um, for my reports this week, I did the LinkedIn um, paid and I did the brokers. So um, what my thought was we could um, create a quiz like with a little article so that, it, um, businesses and like CEOs are more apt to like want to learn a little bit more information and the article would be like ha steps to relocating your business so then when um, businesses and, and the present CEOs they click on this they're learning a little bit more information and um, then they will then when they click on this, we know that they are at least interested or looking into um, learning about more about like relocating. So we already know that they're a little bit on our side of, of maybe potentially coming to Wallingford. And then I also made a quiz to like, it would be like a more fun way for them to like experience um, like to learn about like, I guess the steps in um, relocating. And so I, but what I also did in behind the quiz is that like each question has logic. So it'll go through and like, if we want, we could like tailor it so that we don't want restaurant spaces when we do want office spaces. And so eventually um, we get down to the end of the, the quiz and then you could put your email in and then your name, but I won't, but um, you eventually get to Wallingford. I also have other, um, other possibilities so that they don't get the same thing every single time. And down here it says learn more. And I tied that to the Y Wallingford page. And so um, we could get 
leads through this. And we know that these people are very interested in um, relocating. They're a office space, a manufacturing space. They are looking for, say, a technology center. And we know like more or less more about them. And they are essentially electing to give us this information. Um, and so here's what's happening behind the scenes. Um, each, sorry, each question has like a logic that gives, um, like that brings you on a path. This is like the normal Wallingford path to get down here, but you have other options so that someone just doesn't see Wallingford every single time and it doesn't seem biased. Um, but every question also has an opportunity to get back onto the Wallingford path. And what I like is um, they also have an email notification. So when they elect to put their email in, um, you could do like, thanks for taking the quiz. Here's your other possibilities. So even if they didn't get Wallingford, they took a different path for questions they will always get like the information about Wallingford and like the links to go and see more about Wallingford. Um, and then what I like about type form two is that you could check the results, but you could also connect, um, connect your survey with other like Google analytics, Salesforce, um, Facebook pixel, which could also all help you in your marketing, like, retargeting and and creating lookalike audiences and things like that and so my thought after this was we could um do either the linkedin in mail like the the past team mentioned or we could do other different retargeting techniques like sending them another article about like top 10 reasons why wallingford is a business savvy like town like an article and, or um, we could do like uh, an email um, tech message like saying from Tim, like, hi, I'm the economic specialist um, here at Wallingford. Let me tell you a little bit about why Wallingford is uh, business friendly. You can call me at this number or et cetera. That's all I have for that. Um, for brokers, I I created. How about, how about thoughts on the survey? For me or for them? I, I'd welcome thoughts for from any, everybody. <clears throat> I think they're a good idea. Um, I, I think a uh, anything that has a, a call to action uh, is is going to be good. Um, you know, from a uh, participant standpoint, um, the I think the uh, I think the typical guy that you you could want to get is not somebody who's often, you know, jumping on uh, on surveys just for fun. I think yeah. um, if you had some sort of a, um, you know, and and maybe it's a question for you, Tim, is um, the math. You know, there's there's usually some math behind decisions to make this kind of a move, right? So I'm thinking that what might be of interest to the person you're trying to get is, you know, maybe some best practices or um, a quick calculation um, to see what energy rates are going to be um, for, for, for this or that. I mean, they just find some kind of a hook that would get them to, uh, to respond because I think just the... You know, I mean, uh, it, it really depends on, on the survey. Um, but I think if you if you had a hook, and the hook is typically here is going to be electrical. Um, so um, a, a call to action that gives them, you know, best practices uh, in or tying into, um, you know, see, see what Wallingford's electric rates uh, w could mean, you know, look at, we could do a, could you do a cost comparison? Um, 
Tim on if somebody gave you the last 12 months of their, you know, their operating expenses from electrical standpoint in, um, in, uh, in another town, uh, it, it just kind of do a what if here's what, here's what you would have had tie it into, you know, incentives and so forth. And I think that that to me would be something tangible that they can, uh, that they would actually get something for their time. Um, which absolutely which be done my my uh, the Todd Langston guy he said that year over year he's uh, month over month actually he saves a thousand dollars on his electric bill um, and so what he does with that is he gives it to his employees so he can pay his employees more because of that yeah. See, now that that statement right there, I think, is is impactful. Um, you know, if you had uh, kind of an endorsement let off at that, and such and such a business, and particularly if it's a business that would be something that uh, that EDC is is uh, interested in having in town, to have that uh, that endorsement from somebody in that in that area, uh, you find a similar business, and and uh, that that statement alone is huge. You know, so that I think would get a click. You know, at the end of the day, you want somebody to respond, and I think that would be uh, that would be a, a, a great way of uh, getting a response. I think testimonials are part of the campaign. It's a matter of where we weave them in and how many of them we leverage. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, to your point, Anthony, and to Chandler's as well. So for sure, and getting testimonials from people like Todd or or uh, Patrice Raylon, that was not going to be an issue. We we will have plenty of opportunity. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Bruce, your, your boss, Bruce will, Warwick will give us a testimony. I, I just, I yeah. just know these businesses well enough where, you know, they'll be happy to do it. So, so it's a matter of how we, how we leverage and, and use those testimonials along the framework that we're building for, you know, getting the messages out. Yeah. One of the things that I wanted to say just before you go into the broker is the key here is uh, whatever ad that you do should be providing additional value to the business owners. And so doing the quiz definitely can do that because by the end you're saying, hey, listening to all of your problems and whatnot, especially if we add in some of these things like Anthony was talking about, about the calculations and whatnot, that's good, but make sure that it provides overall value as opposed to providing just Wallingford value. Yeah. So what what, I mean by that what, is that if it comes off at the end is like, oh, this whole thing was an ad, it instantly diminishes the value that that the survey offers. If it actually has real concrete information behind it, then people say, oh, well, wow, this actually gave me information and it pointed to Wallingford as a possibility. But more than that, if they see that the town itself is offering this kind of value, basically no strings attached, suddenly it's like, well, well, what else will that town do for me? And that creates the possibility that maybe Wallingford is a community that I want to be part of. So, but cool. Yeah. I like the idea a lot. Great, great points. And Chandler, again, for, for my edification, um, so we, we have this quiz. How, how is it disseminated? You disseminate, I thought, through LinkedIn. And um, what you'd have is there's like, you could put it, like I mentioned before, in like an article that, that like we said, gives value. Um, and then it would come up in like a single, um, single person, single page ad not page, but single post ad, and then um, people would click on it. And so you'd learn, you'd get the metrics through LinkedIn, and then you'd get a, a deeper metrics through the, the, um, the quiz. So, so this becomes um, one, one element of a, of a multi-element uh, communication promotions plan that's going to go out on a variety of platforms. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Okay. With some with some technology and and metrics behind it that are that are measurable, correct? Yeah, you could check the results on both LinkedIn side and on the quiz side, and then you could um, with Typeform you could leverage those by connecting it with the other apps. Okay, very good, creative. Um, and then here's. 
my, I guess, broker flyer. I took some of your information on the Y Wallingford page. And so I, I just put it together and with something that you could give to, to brokers for like a more tangible thing. And then I totally stole Shay's idea with the, the QR code. And this, what it does is it links to the, um, links to the Y Wallingford page. And then when we get potential Facebook pages, I put in the, the icons for that with like your contact information. I also have a little call to action here. I, I really like the, uh, the idea of having a flyer like that. Um, we can work on some of the uh, content that just needs to be uh, some of it corrected. But it can always be rearranged. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the concept a lot. Is to always have something you can send out. Yep. Um, even on a, you know, if it's a relatively quiet day when it comes to messaging of other sorts, we've got something that we can throw out there. You know, it, it just, uh, uh, I like it a lot. You know, when we talk about brokers, and I know I've I've gone on about the importance and the the uh, you know the critical nature of having those brokers uh, have great relationships with this town. I've used the term site selectors, and I've noticed that in our in our print dialogue, I seldom ever see the term site selectors. Right, but as we are, you know, it's it's not as difficult for me to take and build relationships with brokers when I'm dealing with again our our, our past marketing strategy has been that our goal is to make sure that we are known to those businesses within Connecticut who are predisposed to doing businesses in this state. And if they're thinking of expansion or relocating, I wanna be in that conversation. That's, that, was our, that was our prior marketing strategy and still will be. But we're, what we're really bolting on here is something that goes beyond Connecticut. Well, they're not gonna know Tim Ryan or Wally from the, from the hole in the wall. So, you know, the site selectors are, are a critical piece of this. It's not just individual brokers, but it's site selection companies. So we've talked about how are we gonna find where those companies are and, and how to reach them as part of this process. So I would, I would ask that as we talk about brokers, we also get accustomed to saying brokers and site selectors so that we really get that ingrained in our minds. They are a critical piece uh, with any any company of scale, I'm not talking about if someone's looking to open up a hamburger stand, but uh, or even frankly a small manufacturing facility for that matter. But if someone's looking for anything of scale, they, they, those companies don't start looking themselves. They they contract with site selecting firms to, to find those spaces. So we want to make sure site selectors know that we're here too. And my last point was, we were looking at. Um, potential businesses to target and you mentioned office space was our biggest weakness and so i thought we could do two things business uh, banks take up a lot of space and they they are a competitive entity so they'll attract more businesses and more financial services and um medical companies um like like we mentioned before like proton medical and and businesses like that because um, I think that you have a strong draw in terms of um, we have uh, Yale's medical, um, I guess, graduates and Quinnipiac also has strong medical graduates. So I think that's a, a value add for us. And then um, another, like, I guess, side uh, secondary business would be like, there's a company in New Haven called the Di uh, District. And what they do is they're a, um, they're like, a, I know you mentioned you don't like the the office sharing, but this I feel is different because they create they're an office share, but they do it for entrepreneurs. And so I feel like if you have an entrepreneurial space like the district in New Haven, um, that builds a community for these entrepreneurs. I feel like. That's a, that's a, you could go to businesses and say, hey, we have the Hubcap program, we have these um, these college programs, and now we have the this entrepreneurial program. I think you, you have a lot of different uh, aspects to pull in talent from. I think yeah. that would be a strong value add. The district is what's called an incubator. It um, provides a facility and 
cheaper access to resources that startup businesses need without having to pay for a full office space. Like Hubcap. They also they also have like a, a community around it. Like they have a gym as part of it. They have a, a restaurant as part of it. So he builds a, a lot of like communities and like an atmosphere. It, just for just for clarity, Chandler. So when when you and I were having a conversation as to whether, um, uh, yeah, we were we were interested in trying to attract more incubator spaces and so forth. In in my mind, I'm, I'm not opposed. Um, it's just it's just not our target. I think. Yeah. Uh, incubator space. I'm very familiar with the district. I've been there a number of times. It, it's um, it's very collaborative workspace. Uh, as David said, it is built for entrepreneurs. This, this will get atten your attention because it gets most people's attention. They actually have, you know, uh, free beer on tap all day long, which blows some people's minds when they say, why would you infuse that into the workplace? But it does not get abused. It's one of those, uh, you know, it's one of those things. Most of the entrepreneurs are working out of office spaces that are frankly no larger than, you know, a typical office or very small, but they share other resources, you know, copy services and, you know, certainly kitchen facilities and things of that nature. The, the, the district is also heavily subsidized um, with, with, with um, and so it's not, it's not a model that stands on its own feet yet. Um, uh, and then me understanding the office inventory that we have in our community, um, I guess my inclination is if we can attract ourselves to people who are gonna be self-sufficient without needing uh, us to go out and try to find the money to make it work, it's, it's a lot more beneficial to us in the long run. Yeah. I will share that, you know, uh, occupying, we, I think I share with you folks, you know, uh, our class A office space is upwards of 30% vacant. If you, um, if you follow any of the news, it's not a Wallingford thing. It, it's not just a regional thing. It's not just a Connecticut thing. All right. It's a, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a big issue, you know, especially in this COVID environment where offices are being rethought and people are downsizing offices in a very big way. So it's a heavy lift to try to make sure that people understand that we have office, but we have office at lower price points, given, given our, our geography and central location and access to the highway system that would make our offices, I think, more attractive to you know, folks in some of the uh, you know, higher cost offices, especially as they're retooling. So, so again, not opposed to the incubator type concept. And, and we have, you know, um, I would say, uh, you know, Hubcap, you haven't been there. It's it's not large. I mean, there's just like room for two or three entrepreneurs. It's it's a small, but it but it's it's something to say that we have. So it's 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 good. Um, it's not currently occupied by anybody. So it's just like you know, it's just, they're just not like there's a long list of people chopping at the bit to go into incubator spaces. It sounds good. Um, it's not as practical as some people think. There's a, a big incubator in uh, Middletown that has never even been half full. So um, I, so my inclination, I'm not down on those things. I'm just, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna aim my arrows at some targets, I'm gonna aim them at the targets I think have got more sustainability and they can stand on their own feet as opposed to us trying to go out and find, you know, some ways to subsidize the project. But just, just for clarity. Yeah. And I didn't know about the, the subsidies. So I, I just saw this bright glitz and glam, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's all good. I mean, the district is, uh, it, it's, a, it's a nice amenity, um, especially in a city like New Haven, who has been much more attractive to medical device, uh, you know, manufacturing the medical sphere. But, you know, there's, there's people in there writing, writing code and people inventing stuff. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty cool place. If anybody ever wants a tour, I, I'd be more than happy to make that arrangement because it's, it's kind of a, it's a nice, nice place for folks like yourselves who are, you know, very entrepreneurial in nature to just see and, and experience. Okay, so next up, uh, let's do, since we already did LinkedIn, let's do the LinkedIn unpaid, Jack. All right, so um, right now there is no existing Wallingford LinkedIn account. Um, so in order to create one, you actually need a personal account to be linked um, to it in order to create it. So I figured we use Tim's and there are some requirements to that. 
Um, you do need the company email and URL attached, and you also need, um, you know, a certain amount of connections established. But I did look uh, Tim up, and I think that you have a profile that works for it. So, um, linking um, you to the account initially um, is how we should get it started. Um, and then uh, moving on after that, um, once we have the account verified, we have to in add information in like the URL, the logo. So I figured we'd do like the company seal that you see on, I mean the the uh, town seal that you see on the uh, Wanting for website. Um, as a logo, you can do the um, a back cover, which I assume you could just do um, Wallingford. Um, and then the main part is to start building out the network. And so to do that, I believe that some of the main things that we should start with is looking at um, uh, Wallingford employees. Um, so people that are um, employees of the town to start linking to um, the uh, page and then also saying like they work there just to build the initial connections and then um, building um, connections with the local businesses that we have already I think would be very important to bolster up the connections and will play a role later on but and then once we have those main connections kind of built out we can start targeting toward the citizens posting on Facebook saying to link with us on uh, LinkedIn um, but we can start targeting um, potential um, businesses, potential business executives in order to start making those connections and reaching out. And so I actually created a um, mock uh, message to reach out to um, businesses or executives with. Um, and it follows like a basic guideline where um, you hit some major points that are relevant to their business. So you should do some prior research, look at what's most relevant to them, and then construct a few of the major um, facts that Wallingford has uh, that will be attracting uh, them because I feel like um, if it's just a, un um, a unified letter across, it won't be as um, relevant to them. However, you don't want to add too much information because if it's too much, then you're just kind of shoving all this information in their face and hoping that they'll read it. Uh, you want them to read all of it. And then um, at the end, you start to link them to towards um, the Wallingford website because that's where the bulk of the information is. If they make it all the way through the message and get to there um, and they're interested, they're most likely going to click on the link. But I also uh, said that if you have any questions to feel free to respond. Um, and then I um, also made a guideline for um, if a business reach, reaches out to us through our LinkedIn. Um, I did a similar thing where you should do some prior research. You should look at um, what their businesses need, answer any questions that they have, and try directing them towards the website. Um, and if you start to establish a conversation with uh, a business on LinkedIn, um, relying on those past connections we made with local businesses, I think would be important because if we have a good connection with a local business, we can introduce them to a business we're trying to um, get because um, it's good to have testimonials to say like, oh, the, you know, Todd Langston, the Chick-fil-A guy, he um, said this about the town of Wallingford, but it's better to hear that from the actual guy that said it. Um, so if you can make those introductions through the messaging, it'd be um, uh, really good. Um, and then my background is actually in copywriting, uh, specifically for social media. So um, usually when you begin a social media, you should define um, six uh, things, which are vision, values, voice, visuals, timing, and tactics. And so in this LinkedIn uh, blurb, I've defined um, each of those um, and what we um, are, what our values are in conveying, what voice we should be using. Um, obviously professional, our visuals should be clean, our tactics. Um, mainly right now, um, a lot of the content that people are engaging with are infographics and videos on LinkedIn. I also put the best times to be posting, Wednesdays 8 to 10 or at noon, Thursday at 9, 1 to 2, and Friday at 9. And I think that once a week is probably a good um, way to start not flooding our uh, profile full of content, but uh, being established and start to building it up. Um, and then um, lastly, the information that we do post, um, some of them just can be blurbs, but I think that we can pull a lot of the content from 
uh, the Wallingford website, specifically the Why Wallingford. There's a lot of good information there. And if you start to break it up into little sections and make maybe a small infographic to send out or use the video and post that on our LinkedIn, we're repurposing the content we already have into little blurbs and sending them out there that the content that we want people to see. That's all I got. Well, wow, that's a lot. That's great. <laughs> well done, Jack. So, Jack, if I understand the, the work assignments correctly, that you are going to be our, our quarterback on the LinkedIn, on the free LinkedIn initiative. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So, uh, Anthony mentioned that. I'd like to hear Anthony uh, chime in because I know he's uh, he uses LinkedIn a lot. The questions I have is, so you, you saw my LinkedIn account. All right. So, um, it's, it's clarify are you saying set up a separate Wallingford LinkedIn account? Or in, in my mind, I'm saying, you know, a town is an entity, but Tim is a person. To, I don't know which people would be like more likely to respond. Help me understand that structure. Is it a Tim Ryan LinkedIn account that we expand or we create a new one or both? I think that we should create a uh, Wallingford page, um, but you would have to be the one that's linked to it. It needs, in order to create a like business uh, page, you have to have a, uh, person attached to that um, organization in order to create that page. Um, however, I think that a page is better than um, a um, personal profile because um, one, it's more official, the town of Wallingford reaching out versus just you. And then also um, uh, you can still be the face of that page and, and be the person attached to it, running it. Um, but I think that having it as Wallingford um, allows it to expand past just you um, and encompass more information than that is just relevant uh, to you. Also, um, it can be, um, if it was attached to you um, and then 20 years from now, you, you know, you no longer are the economic director, then the next guy would have to set up his entire profile to match yours. Um, this way, we're setting up a, a wallet for profile that lasts longer than hopefully all of us. <laughs> well said. Well said. Okay. Anthony, thoughts? I, to put yeah, you no, I, top, I, but... I agree. Um, if you look at, uh, at at my profile and then the one for Hobson Monster, I created it. It's it's off of mine. It's linked to mine. Um, it's, just, it's just the way you do it. Excellent. So, and then Jack, based on again, Anthony's recommendations from last meeting about coming up with some sort of a content library. So um, uh, we would we would maybe set up, I don't know, maybe, you know, if we message once a week, we set up four weeks worth of messages. Um, yeah. and, and back to Chandler, you know, I hadn't thought about this before, about the Pro Ten Beam Therapy Center. But I mean, we can start with their permission, of course, and I would I could get it, but we could start with, you know, something saying, you know, the future home of the Pro Ten Beam Therapy Center, which won't mean anything to most people. What will mean a lot to most people is that Yale New Haven Hospital and Hartford Healthcare are, are joining in a, in, a, in a, you know, merging in a joint venture to create this Pro Ten Beam Therapy Center. So there's, there's almost economic development messaging I could come up with easily every single week. Yeah. It, well, you get an opening of a small business or the expansion of, uh, Roland Technologies or you know, whatever. So you would be the quarterback, you would be, you and I would communicate, I guess, or with the committee and we say, okay, this is the message we wanna send out this week. And then you would send it out. Then who who responds to, as I know, frankly, right now, I find it laborious and I frankly, I think I've shared it with you, I do it from home at night when I'm sitting to relax, I always go on my LinkedIn page and say, okay, who do I need to respond to today? And because if you don't respond, they don't think you're alive or listening, right? And I just assume, um, I'm hoping that we're gonna generate some good volume, but I'm a little intimidated about the time it's gonna take me to reply to all these unless you're part of the response team as well. Yeah, I mean, I definitely can be. Um, just to comment on the, the content library, um, I work with those um, often, um, creating a content calendar, um, you know, it's better to do it week by week to make sure the con the content is relevant and, and timely. Obviously, there's evergreen content you can produce, which we can have, um, you know, as per the Y Wallingford page to take uh, content from there. But we want to make sure that um, if we're announcing like a new business, that that's not um, 
later posted down the month, but like right, right then. So, um, a content calendar is good, but you want to make sure that you're reviewing the week when you're posting, because you want to make sure that the content you post that week is, is relevant to the time. Yep. Yeah, especially if, if we get response from a broker, a site selector, you know, we don't want days to go by before anybody responds. It's going to, it's just going to send the wrong message. I would suspect. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, and of course, you know, as, as uh, I think, uh, David, you put in your, your minutes from last meeting, the very f big thing in bold is absolutely nothing, zero, gets posted by the team unless it's approved by the town. Absolutely nothing. So as I talk about responding to LinkedIn inquiries, that's something that would need to be coordinated so that we can coordinate the response, you know, so. Absolutely. But, okay. Jack, is, this, your, I have, your I have a question of how to approach this reminds me of when I went to Iceland with the MBA students, and we got to actually talk to the country of Iceland's marketing team, because their whole thing was to try to draw in tourists, but they had one campaign that worked out really well, which was that people would post to a centralized site, and then the questions were farmed out to the relevant businesses or locals who could then respond and so that way they felt like they were part of the community that might be a small thing especially if you build those connections of hey we've now linked to if someone sends a question yes you can certainly have centralized responses but you can say actually let's connect you with and so long as you have that company's approval that might be a nice additional touch to get people to say wow this really is a place that supports each other yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yeah, I think um, I think that's a great idea because I actually personally went on the Iceland website and did that because I thought it was such a great idea. Ah, um, excellent. <laughs> yeah, it, it was unique. You know, I've never seen it before, and and I like Iceland. Um, I guess my question is: is there is there a time frame with which to answer? In other words, should you do it within a day? Should you do it within a week? Is it is there an optimum time? Or just ASAP. Uh, I'm not quite sure, Jack, what your feelings are on that. Yeah, I think uh, you should obviously do some initial research of the company that you're responding to, because if you if they're asking a question and you give them information that's not relevant, it's basically like you didn't respond to them. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that taking the time to review the business, but also getting back to them, I would say uh, one to two days, as long as it's not the weekend, I feel like most um, uh, businesses would you know, be okay with you not responding during a business day. But um, I think one to two business days is probably um, what you're looking at to respond. Sounds great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you very much, Jack. Of course. And let's do Instagram next. Sure. So um, for Instagram, I first looked at um, different options for the uh, account name. Um, the one that I rec would recommend would be the first one, uh, wallingford.ct. Um, it clearly outlines the town and the state, um, so it kind of gives very little room for people to mistake it for something else. Um, and then for the bio, uh, something very short, kind of like, uh, welcome to the official Instagram account for the town of Wallingford. Um, kind of when people click on the account, they'll see that, um, especially if they're from Wallingford, they'll see it and they'll be like, oh, like, this is my community, I wanna be a part of it. Um, and for some rules or timeline, um, I was thinking one post every three to four days so that you're not flooding people's feed um, and you're kind of giving them information when they want it um, rather than too much. Because um, I know if, if I see one account pop up in my feed too much, um, it can get kind of overwhelming. Um, and I think, that comment interaction isn't as needed unless um, there's a question that's asked that would be um, informational to have the answer to, whether that's to that specific person or business or um, something that could benefit anybody looking at the post. Um, and I think that the DMs can be checked because I'm sure there's gonna be people reaching out, um, but obviously they have to be referred to the EDC before a response is given. And for pictures, I think that we need to find a way to get some other pictures that aren't just the ones found on Google. 
um because some of the ones that i found are kind of stock images like it doesn't give a great perspective of the town so i think that for the initial post something along the lines of um the picture i posted on the document it was kind of just a, a plaque with wallingford um and then a kind of a description of the town kind of just welcoming people to wallingford it's like when you're entering a state and you see like welcome to new jersey um kind of just t giving people um the idea that it's their town and that they can share it with their friends and family to get um the rest of their uh, friends or family on the on the account and then for the caption idea i think something simple and uniform um like welcome to wallingford and then the hashtag wallingford ct um and then having tag wallingford for a feature would help generate more content that could be posted on the account um, rather than just pictures that people could find on the internet, kind of pictures that are taken by actual people um, that could help build a sense of community. Um, I know my town back home, they've built a, a large following on Instagram and a lot of it is because um, people take pictures, send it in, the account will post it and then the person that took that picture will repost it so that people can see that the town Instagram reposted their picture. Um, and then for the next post after the initial one, I think that they should be photos that highlight the beauty of Wallingford, um, as well as uh, places and spots in town um, to kind of give people a sense of what the town has to offer to a quality of life perspective, um, as well as like what people can do in the town. Um, so for the rest of the caption ideas, I think it should be um, the place of the picture, if it's a place, um, and then the same hashtag Wallingford CT, and then tag Wallingford CT for a future for a feature, kind of keeping the caption very uniform so that people kind of know what they're getting when they see the picture. Because um, I know if you keep that tag Wallingford CT for a feature um, the same in all the pictures, people will remember it and they'll remember that if they see a picture that they can share a picture as well and get it posted on the account. Um, and for next tasks, um, I think that we should follow small businesses in Wallingford on the Instagram account to kind of build that sense of community and have them um, let their followers know that Wallingford now has an Instagram and that they can kind of come there as well as to their small business Instagram. Um, check DMs for people sending content um, as well as connecting the Instagram to the Facebook page to allow posts to be shared on both. So it's if we post something on Instagram that we also want to share on Facebook, you can easily set that up to where when you post on Instagram, it automatically shows up on Facebook. Um, and then adding the town website to the bio so that if people want to learn more about the town, it's very easy for them to see the link and press it. And then they can kind of scavenger their way around and learn more about the town. That's a, that's a, a great outline, John. Um, so, uh, yeah, well done. So uh, talk to me about audience development. How do, how do we, I, I've used Facebook, use LinkedIn. I've never mm -hmm. been on Instagram, so I don't even know how it works, but uh, help me from there. So I think the f first way should be um, following small businesses. Um, you don't want to follow a ton of people. So I don't know if following people in Wallingford would be the best option. I think more of it would be following these small businesses and then using the other social media platforms to kind of help build this audience um, or even the website, um, having a link to the Instagram account. So when people go on Wallingford, they can see the Instagram account. Um, also sharing it in the, in the Facebook pages, in the Facebook groups. Um, just to let people know that there's an Instagram account that they can follow to stay updated. Um, I think that for right now, those would be the best ways to build the audience so that it's more of people in Wallingford rather than people that may not live in Wallingford um, to definitely keep that sense of community. Because I know like if I see a post for a town that I'm not a part of, it kind of um, it's kind of not something I'd want to see unless it's something that, that's very interesting. But I know for Instagram, I think that it's 
most beneficial to keep it as a community as well as using it to highlight the uh, what what Wallingford has to offer um, to people that may be looking to move or relocate. So, so the, the the contacts from you know LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, mm. are, are these contacts groups? Are, are they can you cross pollinate? Um, I know the the Facebook group. You'd be able to post in the Facebook group that or that there isn't a that there is an Instagram account, um, and then you could just put the link or the username, and people could easily find it. Um, I think LinkedIn is the same way. I'm not completely sure. I think. If you put the link um, on the account in the, like, the the account profile, people can just click on it and find it. Um, I'm not I'm not exactly sure. Okay. Hey. Thoughts for the discussion. And again, John, based on my opening comments in the meeting, um, um, I mean, how do how do we know? How do we convince our mayor that, that having an Instagram account and putting effort into that initiative is going to benefit this community from an economic development perspective? Other than we're saying it, it, it should. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that the main thing that should be highlighted is the sense of community that it could bring. Um, I know it kind of shows that people are coming together, especially if you're getting features, um, pictures that are sent in by people in the community. Um, it encourages more people to do the same. And then if a business is looking into the town and they see the town has an Instagram and it's well established and it shows that it's a very good sense of community, um, then it, it kind of is very beneficial. Because I know for my town, they have around, uh, 50,000 followers on Instagram. And if, if a business were to look at their Instagram, it would clearly see kind of how the town is set up. Um, so it would kind of give businesses a way to like see the town without going there necessarily. So they so, get to see parts of the town that they may not be able to see otherwise. John, what's the population of your town? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Approximately. Just it's it's probably pretty big. Um, well, it's, John, uh, looking that up, okay. nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand in Morristown, and then there's also Morris Township, which is a part of it, and that's twenty-two thousand. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, I guess you put them together. That's that's Wallingford, right, Mark? I, I would say that. Yeah. Yeah. So, John, I was actually going to say, could you by tomorrow? send Tim some reference towns so that way he can see yeah. what accounts they have and what sort of response they're getting. Yeah, definitely. Hey, you well, know, hey guys, this is Rob real quick. I, and I know our, our primary focus is on attracting businesses. That's the whole premise of this project. But um, in terms of selling this concept to the, as a collective, selling these technology concepts to the mayor as well, I think the, uh, the consideration will be not only how successful they be, but his thought is what kind of investments are we going to have to make monetarily and from a human resource perspective. Um, and, and I think maybe if we also consider as an adjunct to trying to attract businesses, some of these technologies, can we also sell them as a benefit to the people in the community that, that live there already and to the businesses mm -hmm. in the community so that it's, it's a multi-pronged advantage. We're not solely focused on, well, show me other communities that have attracted businesses. Give me that, give me that benchmark. Uh, from when before and when after. If we broaden the if we broaden the benefits of some of these technologies um, a little bit, and again, understanding the costs and the resources involved, it may be more attractive than just solely basing it on how many companies can we add with this technology. If that helps support the use of these technologies, because I I certainly am, am in favor of, of of exploring these further for sure. Great points, Rob. So Samantha and Callum, I'm, I'm, we right now, to the best of my knowledge anyway, have no references on our website regarding any of these technologies. And I'm assuming that this is, we you start to you know, cross over, right? So we would have to take and, and have some method, some means for people who visit the Talon of Wallingford website to then, you know, join us on, you know, LinkedIn, et cetera, right? Uh, that, 
that correct? Yeah. I mean, I think that would be fairly straightforward. And you could either just add icons in like the footer that link directly to the social media, which is recommended. So it's always there on the page. Um, and then there's also options for having integrations where you could have, uh, say, for example, an API that pulled all the recent posts. So if people wanted to engage with the posts through the website, they could see that there too. But there's lots of different ways that you could integrate social media into the website. Okay, perhaps for another conversation, but um, we understand, you know, our target as, as Rob just laid it out and it, it broadens a bit, which is all great, but what, what I feel like he don't want to see um, it quite selfishly is, you know, someone's starting to put messages on LinkedIn about, or, you know, um, you know, whatever medium uh, about, you know, the pothole, you know, that's in front of their house or, you know, some other municipal issue that they're having. And all of a sudden this becomes a playground for all the stuff that we didn't want it to become. I'm not sure how we control that, but, and I'm not looking for an answer right now. It's, it's somewhat rhetorical, but I think it's something that we need to be aware of when we, we put it out there in, in, in such a broad way. Okay, so let's do Facebook next. Yeah, so I will apologize. I did recently, like after we put this out to Chandler, change a couple of things due to some research. So there will be some updates to this. Uh, cool. First of all, um, page name stayed the same, except I shortened the at to just Wallingford CT. Um, it's not taken. The only slight confusion there may be is there is a Wallingford VT. Uh, so that would just be something to be aware of. Yep. Uh, we're going to be starting a page. So it's a lot similar to the LinkedIn page. Uh, it needs to be connected to a personal account. Um, and we'll also need like a profile and a cover picture, which can be the seal and then just like a scenic picture of Wallingford. Um, short page bio, somewhat similar to the Instagram bio, uh, mostly just introducing the page. It's going to provide information and links to town events, local newspaper articles, and other local updates, and that it's looking to engage the community in a positive and educational way. Um, I know one of your worries is it turning into a place for complaints like the forums tend to be. With a page, you can limit like the responses to your post. And because you're controlling the content that goes on the page, you're limiting the relevance of someone posting that in the comments. Because if you're not, if you post something like a, here's a town article to this business, it doesn't make sense for someone to then in the replies be like, there's a pothole. So that's one of the benefits to having a page is you control the content. You can make it not relevant for people to post those complaints. And you can also directly address those complaints if they come up. Um, so, the... Brenna, excuse me yeah. for the interruption, but so I'm just thinking about so <laughs> post something. So are we looking at it before it goes live? Is that what you're saying? Or just by virtue of the nature, it just isn't going to fit? So do you mean like, so on a page, we're the only ones who can post content. Oh. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. a page differs. So the forums, they have moderators, but the mo all the moderators do is they can check the content before it goes out into the forum. The difference of a page is no one puts in like content for us. We produce our own content that goes on the page. The only thing people can do is either direct message us, which only we will see, or they can respond to a post but we can turn off comments on a post. If we think a post might get some negative comments that we don't want, we can turn off those comments. And then if, if there's a comment that we feel is well, for, for, for whatever reason inappropriate, we can, we can control deleting it. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. we have full control of what happens on the page. It's a lot more up to us than one of the forums, which is why I think it's different and more of a benefit than the forums because a lot of the stuff in there, anything goes on with a page, it's controlled content. People know they're getting stuff straight from the source. So they know it's gonna be factual. Yep, very good. Um, the content schedule is something that I have changed. Uh, so I woke up this morning 
and for some reason was struck with maybe there are like suggested best times for posting and there are it's tuesdays through thursdays between 11 and 3 p.m um so i'm going to flip the content schedule to being twice a week tuesdays and thursdays and then as needed for new business updates if we have speaker or events that we want to announce and post about um for content i'm thinking small business information if we have small businesses that connect us and are like hey we have this event going on or we have this promotional idea we're wondering if you can post about it that's content we can use uh looking through articles in uh connecticut newspapers and more local newspapers to see uh, if there are any articles relevant to wallingford uh businesses that are entering the town, we can announce that there are new businesses coming in. Um, and the other thing was if we wanted to do uh, town pictures or fun facts similar to the Instagram as more of like a casual um, posting for one of the days. Uh, the content schedule is definitely something I'm still working on and still looking into. Uh, so those are very rough ideas. <laughs> yeah, we should collaborate. Um, we should collaborate as a committee on, on the content for all of these. Uh, yeah, that was definitely something I was hoping would be setting up a meeting at some point to get through like two weeks of content maybe, uh, or just a general outline of the type of content we want and where to find that content before creating the page. Because when you create the page, you don't want it to sit empty for so long because then people will be like, oh, this is a blank page. Like, I'm not gonna follow it. I'm not gonna pay any attention. So we want to create the page once we have at least a week or two of content lined up. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's really all the information I have there. I would just want to set up a meeting to, to discuss suggested content. I uh, sense that that's going to be an issue for most yeah. people. Is <laughs> either to set up a meeting to create content or to review content that you guys have already created. So yeah, Tim, I think that you're going to be incredibly busy this week. <laughs> Okay, good busy. I always make the distinction between a good busy and a bad busy. Yes. It's a good busy. All right, uh, I don't know if there are any other questions on that. I can move on to the uh, other section that I'm heading, which is the college partnerships. Okay. Yep. Um, so first of all, I will just go over the colleges I chose and why I chose them. Uh, first of all, fairly obviously, Quinnipiac is where we're all from. Probably the easiest connection to make since we have a lot of weight there since we're already working with them and we go to school there. Um, others would be Sacred Heart. It's a fairly, it's not large, but it's very similar to Quinnipiac in those demographics. Uh, it does pull from Connecticut. So some of the students are from Connecticut. Um, they also, one of the things that not all the colleges, but actually most of them utilize is an uh, application called Handshake, which works kind of as an Indeed where you can post your career opportunities and then students can look at them and apply to them through the app. So that's something to look into when we contact these schools is how to get on the app and how to get noticed. Um, one of the other schools I looked at was Albertus Magnus. Uh, it's a very small school. It's only like a thousand kids, but it pulls very heavily from Connecticut. It's majority Connecticut students. So even though it's only a thousand, that's pretty much a thousand Connecticut students. Um, Southern Connecticut State University, over 90% of the kids from that school are from Connecticut. So another very heavily Connecticut population. And then Gateway Community College, also very heavy Connecticut population. So those are things that are gonna work in our advantage when we're contacting these schools, is we're not dealing with, oh, there's it's a big school, but a lot of them are out of state. We're dealing with, they might be smaller schools, but a majority of their population is from in-state, so we're gonna get a lot more interest. Um, for each of the colleges, I listed out email contacts. A lot of them have general like career center emails and then some of them like Quinnipiac has a specified person for each school or college uh, within the university so like for Quinnipiac School of Business has their own specific contact 
Uh, my plan for contacting these schools would be to send out a generalized initial, initial contact email to the general career center emails and to see what type of contact we get from them, where they want to connect us to, and the opportunities we can find with them. And then from there, if we want to start, uh, I know one of the things that Dave mentioned was doing um, connections within programs. So at Quinnipiac, uh, Kiku Jones runs one of the uh, business school programs and they look for like real world issues that they can collaborate with businesses. So that would be something to look into if we want to reach out to Jill Kohler in the School of Business, make a connection there and try to connect businesses with classrooms. So top of the page is a generalized uh, initial contact message that would go out to each of the schools. That's up for workshopping. Um, it mostly just states my name, where I'm working with, what we're trying to establish with this contact, and then uh, call for further connection and discussion with them. So Brenna, if, if we can, um, let's review briefly um, this initiative and, the, and the, the reason why we feel that this is going to help strengthen our economic development offerings, make us more attractive to businesses. You'll notice in every single case, I'm saying, help me with the justifications, right? So. Yeah, so the justification for this is a younger workforce by working directly with colleges, we're working directly with students. Um, these are ed key people getting their education. If we get them while they're still in college, we might be able to focus their education so that they come to Wallingford with exactly what we're looking for if we connect them with businesses early on. Um, working with the career centers, if we get inter career fairs, that's bringing young workforce directly to Wallingford businesses with fairly little effort and money wise we just have to connect the businesses with the career fairs it, so it's mostly a young workforce driver and the I would other add side of this too tim is the potential connections with the universities so having partnerships with universities usually means that you can get some amount of project-based work done at a cheaper rate than if you were contracting out or whatnot. And again, that's part of your workforce development because the people who are working on those projects then become your interns and your employees long-term. So you can you can see how, you know, all of these initiatives are, are be, we're starting the weaving process, right? They're all, they're all woven together in that we have, again, class A office space available. So who are the most likely candidates for class A office? I think it was Chandler that started going through categorically what those what those companies are. Well, those companies, in many cases, in Class A office, they are looking for a talent pool that's an educated talent pool. So, letting them know that we have access to universities and that that you know that that feeds into their their employee base. You know, in addition to that, certainly we've got you know manufacturing jobs, many of which. Um, uh, in fact, the majority of which these days need an educated workforce as well. So it, it, I think it helps that uh, category. Um, I think it also helps strengthen our location because one of the things we've stated in some of the pamphlets, flyers, uh, so on and so forth, is that we're within uh, however many mile distance of this many colleges. If we can strengthen that statement and say, we're within this many miles of this many colleges that we have direct connections with, mm -hmm. it really strengthens that we can get you that workforce, we can get you in connection with those colleges instead of saying you have to do this work yourself. Mm -hmm. Brenna, I think that's an excellent point. It, 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 we need something that other economic people have not done. And, th and I have not seen anywhere, they've said we've been within 10 miles of the university or 20 miles of the university. And they may even said that there's a workforce out there, but if we can directly link the colleges and the universities to the workforce and the manufacturing and the businesses that are looking to come here, I think that that direct link, a good strong direct link will be a hook that we can use that other people aren't using. Yep. 
That's a great, you know, you can almost look at it as a, an, an evolutionary step in what you, we talked about earlier, as far as an incubator for startups, the next level, once you're no longer a startup, you still need those, a lot of those shared services, which you may not be able to afford as a small company or even a large company, or may not have the expertise. Certainly everything that, a lot of the things that you've shown us, I mean, we're, you know, Anthony and Tim and Mark, myself, we've been in business, we've run businesses, own businesses, have all but you're teaching us a lot of things that we were not aware of. So um, I think if we almost create, maybe create another word other than incubator, we can create a new word. Um, but to, to, to promote that, as you've just suggested, and as Tim and, and Mark have reiterated, um, that's a fabulous, uh, a fabulous promotional tool for sure. Any other thoughts before I move on to Shay? Okay, so Shay, let's hear about the pamphlet. Okay, so first um, I'm gonna go over the pamphlet redesign and then I'll go into the email advertising. Um, so the pamphlet redesign, so the current pamphlet that we have, um, it has the information there, um, but I think it just needs to be restructured and reorganized. Um, and also the cover page I think should be changed. So um, the front of the pamphlet has like a picture currently of a plug and they use plug your business into Wallingford. Um, so I actually like the plug your business into Wallingford slogan. Um, it's like strong and it kind of highlights the low electric costs and it's catchy. Um, so I actually think we should keep that, but it, there's a, it says to go to a browser called plug into wallingford.com. So if you put that into your browser, it brings you to the Y Wallingford page. Um, so I think maybe we should change that to just the actual Y Wallingford URL so there's no confusion when people are typing it in if they're on the wrong page or whatnot, because um, that's actually not a page. It just brings you to the Y Wallingford page. Um, so I think we should keep the plug your business into Wallingford, but maybe just change that. Um, I also think that the colors used on the pamphlet are kind of misleading. Um, so I looked at the colors that we use on the website and those are the colors right there that I listed um, that we use on the website. So I think that we should keep it kind of uniform to the website. So we kind of had Wallingford as this brand that's uniform and consistent throughout all of their platforms. Um, instead of using that red, white, and blue, which is on the current pamphlet, um, it kind of gives you like a different feel. It kind of, for me, like when I initially looked at it, it kind of looks like a medical packet with the red and the white. Um, so I think that we should change the colors. And I also think we should change the um, cover page to have a more, um, like a more, what represents Wallingford, like put a picture there um, instead of the plug. So like a picture of the town hall, um, a picture of something that will draw people in to read more. Um, so yeah, so basically the cover of the pamphlet, it should have something on it that want, makes the reader continue to want to read more, to learn more about it. Um, so I think if we change the picture, that would help. Um, and then the inside of the pamphlet has a map that shows the existing businesses in Wallingford. Um, so I think that we could better utilize this map and utilize the space that it has on the pamphlet by showing, by using the map to show the access to the highways and the trains, um, and then just list the businesses that are involved rather than using the map to show what businesses are there. Um, so below I have kind of just like a draft of what I made. I found the map on um, like Google images and then I just added the Wallingford because it actually didn't have Wallingford, but on the map, I don't know if you can see right now, but- um, like You're not sharing your screen. Long. Can you see it? Can you, uh, or I'll you share my it? screen, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, yeah, so this is the map. Um, so it shows, as you can see, there's like, um, it shows the interstates and then the black line is the trains. So Wallingford is right in the middle of that. Um, and it also shows going its connections to New York and Massachusetts. Um, this was like probably the best map I could find that showed the whole state of Connecticut, 
while also like highlighting in on Wallingford. Um, so it shows the centric location. It shows the interstates, the trains. Um, and then on the side, it shows like the, um, the like key. So it shows that the, um, black is the railroad. Um, the dotted lines are the ferry. I don't think that really applies to us, but, um, it, so it has the key. It, this came, the, the map that you have here came from a website. Is it copyright free? Would it be something that we could actually use? Yeah. So I don't know because I was going to ask that cause I, it has like their, I don't, it's, it has, it has like the watermark on it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just like, it didn't even have Wallingford on the map. Um, I just added that in because yeah. all of the other maps that I could find, like Wallingford was small and I kind of want Wallingford to stand out. So I just found one without Wallingford and then added it in. So for this, for copyright law, what we need to do is email the creator of the map and say, hey, we'd like to use it for this purpose. Okay. Our goal isn't to be selling it for money or anything like that. Is it okay if we use it? And so long as we get a written okay from them, then it's totally good. If they come back and they're like, no, then we're going to have to figure okay. something else out, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I figured that that would probably be like an issue because I took it from um, Google Images, but yeah, I can contact them and ask them if we can use it. Um, and so then, Shay, you, you may have just already illustrated it, but so you can manipulate that map if we wanted, the, for example, the highway systems to be more pronounced or something like that. Um, it or is it a I could try. It might be difficult pronouncing the highways just because um, they're already kind of like done. I could like maybe like draw over it and like make them more bold. Mm -hmm. It could definitely be something that I try. Yeah, I mean, the, the, one of the keys key assets is our proximity to the highway systems mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that jumps out so okay the other thing i wanted to ask you uh is like the pamphlet that we have now the brochure um we we employed uh, and, and I, I will say there is no pride in authorship so everything that we do rip what we're doing apart and rebuild it it's we're okay with that so don't, no sensitivities we, we, we had used uh, what we call, kind of call a birds of a feather philosophy where we, we highlighted, you know, Big USA and Amphenol and uh, FedEx and Amazon and just trying to say, you know, those are, there's, there's chemical manufacturing, there's, there's warehousing. What, what are your thoughts of, of incorporating um, something that shows other businesses of, you know, girth that are here that strengthen the, or yeah um i definitely th think that we should be highlighting the businesses that are in wallingford and showing that we have different types of businesses um i just don't think that we should use it with the map i think it should just be listed somewhere else on the pamphlet and right. then maybe incorporate like quotes or something from those businesses um but i just didn't think that the map was the best way to show those um so I think that we definitely should be including those businesses, but rather just like in a list or um, some other part of the pamphlet that's not the map. Thank you. So, so um, are, you in, are you in a position to, uh, to take and put together a uh, um, some sort of a mock-up? Yeah, so I definitely can. I wanted to ask you guys before I did it because I didn't know if you use a company for the pamphlet or if you outsource for it so i just wanted to make sure we we yes we did use a marketing company to do it um so you, you want to i mean there's there's no obligation we can change it or you're saying you'd, you'd like to get their files and start from there um i mean like i can i can make like a mock-up and then maybe if i sent it to them so maybe i could make it first because i don't know like I could make a brochure, but I don't, it would, it would need like the like printing and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, for a lot of that, Shay, you wouldn't have to be the one to create the printing, but yeah. f for this, it, there are some programs that it might be advantageous for you to have. And for most of those, like the Adobe suite, you can get through QU for free. Um, it normally is a subscription, but I can, if, 
for whatever reason, IT, like, hey, you need it for a class or whatever, I can write an email saying, yep, you're totally doing this for a project. For And so then you can get the whole suite for free, which also for any of the rest of you guys, if you need that, let me know. Um, but give it a go. I mean, okay. the, the challenge that we have is if we go back to the old marketing company, they're going to charge money to do any sort of changes or whatnot. Um, and also that takes away some of the learning experience for you yeah. because, hey, if you actually created the the digital brochure for Wallingford, that's way more impressive than saying, yeah, I created some stuff and then I hand it off to someone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yeah, I definitely, I like I'm capable of making it. Um, I just didn't know if, the, if we wanted to still use that company or not, um, but I could make it. Um, Let's go on the assumption that you guys are going to be the end all be all simply because you, if Tim wanted to say, hey, we need to change something, the company would charge money every single time. Mm-hmm. You don't. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you, so you offer a distinct competitive advantage at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, fixed, yeah, I can definitely. Fixed cost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, I know we already mentioned the use of QR codes in the pamphlet to make it easier to access the videos um, if the readers don't have a CD player. Um, but I know we mentioned before that we wanted to keep the CDs in the pamphlet. Um, I don't know if that's still something we would want to do, um, but I definitely think with the growth in technology and the use of QR codes like everywhere, um, it's pretty simple. I'm pretty sure everybody can figure out how to do it. Um, it's just a matter of even if we had to leave like a little directions, um, it, I don't think it would be a big deal. So um, I don't know what the cost of the CD is if you wanted to get rid of it. Um, but if you don't, we could just keep it and do the QR code. So that's something that we could do. I have two types of QR codes. Just, just, to, ad- just to address that, Shay. So. I mean, I for one, but the you know, committee can chime in. Um, you know, printed paper, um, especially since you know, in, in this COVID environment, there's been very few opportunities even to disseminate it or hand it out. Uh, same thing with the CDs. I mean, I, I think everything is going to be electronically, you know, uh, disseminated at this point. So I, uh, I have no affinity to the CDs. I think at the time they were they were great and it it, it was different. Um, I, I, what I envision is a compute or a complete, rather complete, uh, technological suite of promotional materials. I don't, I don't know that we need them any other way. And okay. if we need it, we can always print, print a couple of out. I mean, you know, it's yeah. easy enough to do that rather than go to a printer and say, give me 500 brochures, you know, or make me, you know, 300 CDs. It's just, you know, it's not the way information is moving today. So Shay, okay. that may mean that in addition to the QR codes, maybe just do a like a, a shortened URL, a bit.ly URL for linking to the videos too. So someone can either mouse over with their phone or click on the yeah. link. Um, so this, what I'm talking about right now is, isn't the, this is just the physical pamphlet and then the next uh, is okay. the email advertising. Got it. Um, okay, so then I'll just go into email advertising. So. Basically, the goal of email advertising is to just remind and inform either prospective businesses or brokers about the town of Wallingford. Um, So we want to use the email advertising to draw people to the website, to draw them to our Instagram, social media, everything like that. So everything is going to be on that. Um, And my goal is like with the use of hyperlinks, we'll be able to direct somebody to exactly where they want to go. So if they're reading it, um, and we have like benefits of Wallingford and then we have like our hubcap program We can insert a link that says like learn more about our hubcap program here and they can click on that and it'll take them to Learn more about the hubcap program. Um, so it's kind of meant to be um, like the core to all of our um, Social media website and get people to go to there um, So if we include like a link to our website, it'll drive more traffic to our website and stuff like that so um i was thinking that it would be more of like a form of a monthly newsletter but it'll focus more on attracting businesses rather than like putting out information about the community um 
So I'll we'll inform anybody of any updates, opportunities available in Wallingford and ha also, while also highlighting what's going on in the community. Um, so like when I say to highlight what's going on in the community, we could do like if um, John were to post like a photo of them, like photo of like someone who took it, we could include that on there um, and just say like, hey, check out this picture from one of our residents, stuff like that. Um, we're gonna need a list of emails for this. Um, I don't want to annoy the businesses or brokers with their emails. So I think sending the emails monthly is appropriate. Um, and you can title them like January, why walling for January, 2020. Um, and I think we should start in January. Um, it can focus on the benefits of walling for the latest news, um, which is gonna be a big one because that's gonna be the thing that's changing every month. So we can include different articles um, different openings, business opportunities, if there's a space somebody can move into. Um, and then quotes from current businesses in Wallingford, and, um, photo of the month, links to our Instagram. Um, and then I, I mentioned that we should definitely differentiate each newsletter to stay away from repetitive information. You don't want people being like, oh, I got this email so many times. Um, so I want to use different subjects in the email advertising because that's what they're initially going to see um so using words such as like check check out click here now um your opportunity is awaiting you in longford stuff like that to um, drive a call to action so people will click on the email and then um i have some just ideas about the subject in the email advertising um just like check out longford's latest news business opportunities and more Check out why Wallingford is the right place for your business. Click here for more information about why your business should be in Wallingford. Um, so once the reader clicks on the email, we can format it to um, open the design in the email so readers don't have to click on like an attachment or anything. The design will just pop up once they click on the email. Um, and then I'll be using Canva to um, design this. It provides a bunch of newsletter brochure, infographic templates that will be most useful for our email campaign. And it allows you to import every photo, text, graphics, hyperlinks, and yeah. Well, so Shay, back to audience development. How do we, because the message going to, you know, present businesses certainly would not be, you know, here's why you should move your company to Wallingford. So how do you make the distinction and, and how do we build that audience you know, beyond, and we've got a database of several hundred businesses, so, but how do we build it beyond that? Um, so I think probably contact with brokers would be maybe the most important, um, sending them to brokers and maybe asking them if they have any businesses that are looking to relocate um, and then maybe getting their contact information. Um, but I would definitely say Brokers is probably our main um, bridge in between us and who's looking for businesses. So that might be a way that we could attract new businesses there. Um, but I would say like maybe similar to what we're doing on LinkedIn to find new businesses, we could even be using our statistics that we find from there. Um, but we do need their email information. So that might be a challenge um so that would be something that i would look into further okay okay so thank you very much jay yeah okay. I, i'm glad that you, i only gave you that one as the lead because that one is a multi-part front <laughs> i didn't realize quite how big it was going to be <laughs> okay no, so, okay um, and this leaves us with Callum and Samantha, because you guys have not only everything that you have done, but now you have to integrate everything that everyone's just talked about. So, yay. <laughs> <laughs> the project that never ends. <laughs> yeah. um, I can start real quick with just the content portion of the website. Um, I'm still working on the copy and um, the wording of everything, but I did make contact with all of the connections that Tim and I talked about for business quotes um, to get success stories on the website. And I have two already completed that we got, but I'm still waiting to hear back from 
uh, a broker, Mark Duquo, who's the president of the um, Century Commercial. Yeah. And then also, I'm waiting to hear back from Patrice, but I did get a quote from Gary and Bruce. Um, and I did want to mention, I someone, I'm not sure who said it, but someone said something about a business that uses the utility savings to pay back to employees. If we wanted to put that as a quote somewhere, I would reach out to them. Hmm. That's Todd Langston. Um, and Todd's an awesome guy. His email is todd.langston. So T-O-D-D dot L-A-N-G-S-T-O-N at C-F-A franchisee. So two E's at the end of that, dot com. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and aside from that, I think, oh, I did want to ask a question. Does Wallingford, so when I was doing research on some other town websites just all across the U.S., like not even just uh, central to Connecticut, but most of them have a section for accolades with reward, uh, like awards and honors that they've received in just town papers and things like that. I'm wondering if there's a collection of those stories that we might have for Wallingford that we could also showcase on in some way on the website. Um, but I don't know where I would find those, if you guys already know of some of them that exist. Accolades such as, give me an example, Shay. Right, so I think I saw one that was this our town is the voted number one best city for female ceos and things like that oh okay um i will tell you it, it's unless mark unless you can erupt and think of something it's um i mean you we were you know designated a, a, the first stem community in the state of connecticut that type of thing but i, I can't think of a long that list would be good. Frankly, I think yeah. that's good. <laughs> that would be one of them yeah 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 I, and I what think, was that? Wallingford was the first STEM community? Yeah. Yes. De designated um, as the first STEM community in the state of Connecticut. And for, for export, we were the, the uh, largest um, in, I think, the country, or was it the region? I'm not sure. So we, were the, we were the largest per capita, which is the qualifier, but the largest per capita exporting community in the country. And that was the U.S. Department of Commerce that gave us that designation. Yeah, you know, and that, that's that's a great one. Thank you, Mark, for remembering that. Um, it, it shows you how little time we spend patting ourselves on the back and how much time we look, you know, in a forward direction. But yeah, and, and to you know, so that means we've got a lot of manufacturers that are exporting a lot of different products, right? Hops and Monster being one. Anthony had to step off the out of the meeting, but his company is a huge exporter. Um, you know, so. Anyway, we got a lot of that, so that's that's a nice nice kudo as well. Okay, that's great. So that's that's what I was looking for. So we can okay. put that, integrate that in some way. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I guess I'm just working on finalizing those numbers that we talked about and the content. So. so for next steps on the actual on the page side, um, from the design perspective we're waiting to revise the website based on the feedback from the committee and then from the mayor um, and so we're going to be adding functionality for the faq section with the answers to uh to the questions based on the feedback on their relevancy and then also on their accuracy um we're we're going to uh add links to the new social media um and so i still have to work out whether or not those are going to be going uh, just in the footer and where you can see the icons for them or if it's something that deserves a higher priority and we want to be showing examples of recent posts and I think that depends on um, how frequently we think we're going to be posting going into the future and if there's a likelihood that it might get um, it might not be that frequent we might just want to resort to keeping them as icons in the footer but uh, and then we're also working out how to implement the new page layout. And so we'll be having to get in contact with the uh, the agency to see how we might actually go about making this a part of the real life website. Um, and then um, I think so, that's- Hey, hey Cal, 
Yeah. So if you had any discussions, I don't believe you have with Lynn Wolf here in my office. I, Samantha, I know had reached out to someone in the office that was supposed to be the, the head person for all of the content on the website. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that was Lynn Wolf or not though. Yeah, that's, I was, I was talking to Lynn. Oh, you were, okay. So Callum, is there still, do you have questions about uh, what she as the administrator is allowed to do? Uh, or, or you know, capable of doing beyond that uh, you'd have to involve the vendor or? I think we would have to involve the vendor. I don't think that, um, you, you know, when I was doing my research on the, on the website, I didn't see any content management system built into it. And so that leads me to think that it would be something that would have to be done through the vendor. Okay. So between now and the next time we formally get together, um, do you need me to set up some sort of a uh, meeting between Lynn um, and the vendor, which I'd like to be part of, just so I understand the, the, the depth of what we're trying to change? Yeah, you know, I think that for next steps, I think it'd be really helpful to have the approval by the committee and by the mayor on all the changes that we're going to make before we contact the vendor. Um, just through my experience of, you know, dealing with clients and and so on. It's really helpful to have a, a full scope of work um, before you contact them so that if they need to, for example, give us a proposal on the amount of work that's gonna be required by them or next steps for us so that we can implement it ourselves, um, it's gonna be helpful to have everything approved first and foremost so that we can get a good, good idea or they can get a good idea of what's actually gonna be required of them. But um, as, as far as also making this something that you can re like i guess justify to the mayor um was there any questions that you guys do you guys feel like you have a a good understanding of how this is going to help us approach new businesses and be a tool in the bigger picture or do you guys want more um i guess reasons that we can use to help make the website justify i, I i'd welcome any of your comments um Frankly, websites are much more intuitive to me than uh, some of the social media tools that we're talking about. So I, I think, um, but you know, I, I'd welcome a couple of comments. Now the, um, uh, the prototype that you had sent me um, is going to change now because we're going to add maybe some of the social media um, links to it, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, it's not gonna change a huge amount to be honest, because those are just gonna be at the very bottom in the footer unless you guys think otherwise. Um, so it, it will change, but not, not a huge amount. You'll just see the social media links in the very bottom. So I, I think your comments about scope of work are absolutely positively spot on, right? So, I mean, so, but I, I'm struggling now to say if I was talking to the vendor, which I would not talk to without your involvement, frankly, uh, because you guys are the experts. Um, but if I was trying to take and, and wrap my arms around scope of work, it appears to me all we've done is we've rearranged some things on the page for justifications that you have shared in the past. Um, but I don't know about what functionalities that we're adding that would mean that they have to do something, you know, in the CMS to take and make the changes. So I just, and, and I don't, even if you told me what they were now, I probably wouldn't convey them properly. So I need you to do it anyway. Maybe yeah, we need to get yeah. together on the scope of work is my point. Yeah, I mean, so once we finalize what's going to be included in that uh, scope of work, um, depending on how they have the page set up, it might actually be possible for me to simply um, give them code that they can simply add to the file. Um, and, and that would be a really easy way for them to, uh, it wouldn't require a lot of work for them. And that would reduce the amount of, uh, you know, if, if there was a proposal and they, we're going to charge for time spent on their end. That would reduce it significantly. But um, so depending on how they have the page set up, it might be possible for me to simply give them code that would then directly implement the new design. But uh, that's something that we'll, we'll figure out when we talk to them after we finalize the scope of work. OK. Uh, you, you folks were not aware, but certainly Mark was aware that I have to jump. Uh, I've got a a, a funeral to attend. So I, I've got to get out of here right now. Actually, I'm a little bit going to be a little bit beyond. So um, Callum, just g give me some 
clear direction. Is my next step to set up a meeting with you, Lynn, and the vendor to talk about scope of work? Or you're saying you want to get the approvals first. I get that. Yep. All right. So what you sent me in terms of the, the mock-up, in terms of the, uh, the, the uh, proposed page, that's, that's what I'm taking in. There's nothing else I need to get approved. No. So yeah, for, for now, the page is all that we need to get approved. Okay. If there's any revisions to the copy or the, the accuracy of the statistics, we might actually, uh, we might be based on those two accolades that we just mentioned. I think those are both really noteworthy achievements, like the being the first STEM designated um, town and then also the exporting achievement. I think we might want to find a place to include those on the page. But apart from that, those would be the only two final changes and then the social media links in the footer. And so um, once those changes are made, you can, uh, yeah, it, it'll be ready to approach the uh, the committee. Or um, the actually, you might want to incorporate some of the social media, depending on some of the ways that we implement stuff, like for the LinkedIn, being able to connect people with other local businesses and whatnot, there may be some additional small things to fold into like say the frequently asked questions or um some of the other spots too so just as a heads up there's probably going to be a few more tweaks rather than substantive changes but still things to fold in yeah Cal, I, I think what i'll do um i'm going to reach out to you uh, a little bit later today if not today or tomorrow morning yeah, well i'll try to do it later today though uh, and just see if we can't just massage a little uh, some of the stuff so I get more clarity. And, yeah, and again, my, my apologies, but I, I do have to jump. So, no Thank Mark, you. I'll, I'll touch base with you later on. And um, just as you guys talk about a wrap up and next meeting and all that stuff, just to get updated. And of course, the benefit is I'll be able to watch the rest of the recording. So, <laughs> at some point, because we are recording this. So, yes. All right. Sounds great. All right. Sorry, folks. Have a great day. Another great, great work. Well, we are we are on a great path here. Thanks yeah. very much. Thank you. Right. See you, Tim. Okay. Uh, David, do we have uh, a further presentations or are we? No, well this was the the last one. So what this really comes down to now is when should we meet next? Because it sounds like everyone knows pretty much what they need, but they need they all have stuff that <laughs> you guys get to look over and offer approval on and then we also have the the wonders of the holiday season coming upon us which is going to make getting together a little bit more of a challenge yeah i'm going i'm going to take your lead on it what do you what do you think is the best time to meet again cuz they're they're certainly through exam week this week so let, yep. let's not, let's not stress that any more than it is um and then, um, you know, so, I don't think we should have to meet next week for any reason, because I think we have to start looking at um, some of the information that you had sent on to us and come up with some feedback to you people so we know where we can go from there. So uh, yeah. at, at least two weeks and then probably three. So now you're getting into, you know, you did Christmas and into New Year's. So you, you tell me what you think is best. So, it, yeah, if we do... If we did two weeks, I would put us on the 21st, but I concur. I, there's a lot of stuff for you guys to review, to figure out, make it additional direction from the mayor. So mm -hmm. how about this? Let's agree to do an email touch point sometime in the next three weeks. Between the, uh, So we have the 14th and the 21st. Then the week of the 28th is immediately after Christmas, which I know for some families is still a lot of people around and whatnot. And then we bleed straight into New Year's. So mm -hmm. I, I'm a little bit hesitant, but would January 4th be an okay day to meet? Because that is the first Monday of the new year. Yeah. But I don't know if that, that would be super inconvenient or how, would be how, how is that with the students? Are we... Is yeah, that, so for you guys, ye six. Uh, should it. work fine. Yeah, four yeah. books. Okay. Okay. Why don't we Why don't we tentatively pencil in the uh, the fourth, and then uh, we'll have then talked at least several times with the mayor. Have a meeting with him today. We have a meeting with him again tomorrow. So uh, we'll have plenty of opportunity to start um, 
uh, working on him and um, and getting some more information. And, and the committee uh, will will have a chance to have met also just by themselves to, to look at all the information to think about the best way to go. So let's tentatively make it the fourth. And um, if things change from that, we'll, uh, we'll let you know. Does that sound right? Sounds good. Good. Okay. Then I extend you uh, good fortune with your exams and finals and everything else that has to be done before the year end. Please have a great holiday um, and stay safe. And we'll plan on reconvening then on the 4th. And Chandler, you'll, once we get to you, you'll send out a, uh, the appropriate information to hook up again. Yes, I could do that. Sounds great. I could I keep it. the team on just for one minute after Mark and yeah. Rob head off? Absolutely. I'm going to leave the, the meeting right now. And thanks again. I appreciate it, Professor. Awesome. Have a wonderful time. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for Yi6, um, what I wanted to check with you is, have I given you enough work and not too much work so far? Like, like I said in my email, I kind of winged things and said, yeah, yeah, these seem like good areas for you guys. But give me your eyes and stuff. Do we need to change anything up or whatnot? Because I'm trying to not overload you guys. No, I think it's okay. good right now. I, I think honestly, for me, it's going to depend on how extensive my contact with colleges and people are going to be and what they need from me. Yes. I think is because that could either go very smoothly, everything works out really well, or I need like a million follow up emails and calls with them, and that takes up all my time. So I think that's going to be fairly dependent. Okay, cool. So we will, it, everything's going to stay flexible. And that's why I put secondaries on every single thing. So if, it starts to become too much or you need a second set of eyes on something or whatever, tap onto that person first and foremost. And Callum and Sam, you guys are in kind of this weird state where you're like perpetually dealing with the website. Presumably the website will get finished at some point. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing. So at that point, it up to you guys. Um, we'll try to find additional projects related, but also there will undoubtedly be work needed on the others. So up to you guys how you want to proceed if you're interested in continuing to work, if you guys would like to switch over to helping out with some of the other initiatives or something else altogether. So I wanted to make sure that you guys didn't feel like you were perpetually locked in to the website. Yeah, when uh, when would we have to decide what our next steps are? Whenever everything gets done with whatever you're working on. So there is no, th this is going to be an ongoing, just like whenever. So Callum, if in a month and a half, the website is completely updated, there's nothing else for you to do. And you're like, yeah, I think my part on this project has finished, great you can step out at that point. And if you're like, actually, I'd like to try doing something else for another two weeks or something. Cool. cool. Yeah. I, I think right now, at least I'm, I'm hoping to just see, see my part of the website project complete and then um, probably step out after that. Totally reasonable. So cool. yeah. Thanks. So cool. Well, you guys, I mean, Truly, you've been setting a incredibly high bar. I really wish that you guys had all signed up for like a field project or something so I could actually be giving you credit and a grade for it. But alas, you get your, <laughs> your $250 every two months instead. <laughs> but hopefully that is a good conversation that in addition of putting this onto your resume. But uh, yeah, you guys have been kicking butt this is way cooler and way more extensive than I expected it to be. So awesome. Thank you guys. So if you guys need anything, you know where I am. Um, and if you want to get credit for this for next semester in one way, shape or form, give me a heads up and then we'll turn it into a field project or um, the equivalent. So that way you guys can get credit towards your major. Okay, well, have a wonderful time. I will see you guys, I guess, virtually in the new year and uh, probably email-wise sometime in the next few weeks.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.